Take two. Make sure that's recording. Yes, it has it is. Okay, today's video is gonna be another boring axe video. And for this one, I took some notes. Where these axes came from. I'm gonna start with the newest, which there's not a lot of history from. I was in a junk shop in New Hampshire. This is a one that was made under the True Temper Company. It's still Kelly Works, but and the unique thing with the Black Raven, of course, was the etching of the Raven. If you turn it over, these are really rough to see, but there's a Raven here. And then it's Kelly Works tools and rakes and this and that and under there, USA. If you're not an axe person, you're not interested. If you are, you know all about them. Well, this one I paid $50 for, and I bought it in an antique shop, Tinkerville, New Hampshire. It's in... Uh, Stranford, just across the line, and it's Tinkerville. Great guy. If you're ever up that way, stop at his shop. He's got great stuff there. That one there, not a lot of history. I bought it. This pair here, a lot of some interesting stuff. This one here, and this one here, I bought an axe collection, and these two were in it. I don't know, this was a long time ago and I bought this pile of axes that the person had that had collected axes, knew I did, wanted them gone, time to get rid of them, it was a good buy. This one here is unique. This is a... I believe it's a cruiser. That's a cruiser handle, two and a quarter inch handle, and it's a Killinger cruiser handle. See, these are wider. Black Ravens did not have a real wide. This one here definitely is a lot wider here. Well, cruisers are two and a quarter inch across the eye. And this one measures just a hair over. That's two and a quarter of the handle. And you can see it's just a hair over. Down here is wider. That's normal. That makes it a very desirable collector. Uh, people that want to come on, support their opinions on it, please feel free. This one, we'll put both ends up, is not a cruiser. But somebody thought they'd try to make it look like one. Because they demand a pretty good price for a Black Raven cruiser. And somebody was trying to fool someone. You can see it on it, 3.3 pounds, true temper, still on it. That one is a Kelly Works. There's no True Temper on it. That was before True Temper bought Kelly Works. There is a one stamped here, which I have no idea what it means. And at the top, on the I, there's a six and a zero. And I have another one that has that same stamping in it. We'll get to that one. Okay, that's that pair. Next up, be this. My son works in a municipal highway department. They have a scrap metal refuge. This one, as you can see, the etching is in bad shape. And he pulled it out of dumpster because he knew I collected axes. Didn't even know what it was. And he brought it home. There was this one and one made in China that was all beat to hell. And another one. And here, Dad, you know, and all three were equal to him. And it's like, oh my God, somebody threw a Black Raven axe into a garbage dumpster or a scrap metal dumpster? Well, he rescued that one. That's number four. Okay, number five. The story begins. The farm across the road from ours, neighbor's farm, he was an elderly man when I was born. Lyle Warner was his name. And he bought this axe from the store right here in the center of town. Michigan pattern. Uh, there's a two stamped in this one, but it's not a weight because this isn't a cruiser. That two does not mean anything. And he bought the axe. He was working for uh, Will Ballard, was the farmer's name down the road. We're going to be pre World War II. He was in the 30s, right after the Depression. He bought this. And he told me he paid a quarter for the, he made, paid 25 cents for the axe. 
and wasn't even making that a day working in the woods between doing his chores he had a small farm and he bought this got to the woods put a handle in it which meant he chopped it out of a branch I don't know if he used this maybe one of the other guys to get going and the first swing he took he took that chunk right out of it which was probably a manufacturing error I mean the first swing come on he, he they were cutting hemlock he said frozen knot and hemlock took it right out well I guess he used the other side he never really touched on that for a while till he got another one you can see the raven in this one still pretty good and for years it sat in his barn and had about a 30 inch handle in it and he used it to chop the ice away from the door well, my father bought his farm in the 70s. And uh, this was in the barn when after he passed away and we owned the barn, I took it. This one, again, has the six and a zero on the top of the eye. And this was, there's no true temper on it. That is just a Kelly word. Pretty good story with that one, how it came about. This one is probably my best one. I'll, I'll come up close and maybe you can see the etching in it. And when I was, before I went to school, I started school at five years old. So I might have been five. It could have been in August for school. I don't really remember. I might have been in the spring. I don't really remember. But the state the federal government had bought my grandfather's sugar place over where my land is. We've been there in many videos. Those that are new may not have seen some. Bought a portion of the land to build I-89. And my father was, my grandfather died right after that. He, he just, I've had people tell me it was stress from that because he just couldn't stand to see his sugar place go. I don't know, I was only a young boy. I was like four years old when he died and I was only like five when this came about. Well, my father was cleaning out his sugar house because they, they were gonna bulldoze it down. It was in the, it's right in one of the lanes over there. And I was over there and I found this ax. The handle was broken like this of course, I picked it up and I wanted it. My father, I can remember him saying, put that down, you're gonna get hurt. Dad, I want it, I want it, Dad. No, 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 you know, kids. And why he gave in, I don't know, because my father wasn't that kind of guy. Well, put the damn thing in the trailer if you want it then. We had a tractor and a trailer, we're loading the stuff in that he'd taken up there to get it. We were getting tools and stuff. I don't remember everything. I know there was a lot of stuff in the trailer. And this axe belonged to my great-grandfather, George Ernest Webster, is who owned it originally, who bought it originally. And I, um, I don't know how it survived from five years old, how this didn't get lost. I mean, you know kids, I mean, I don't think I probably was allowed to play with it. I really don't know. I know when I was a teenager, abusing it, abusing it. And how it didn't get lost, this is an Aztec handle. And uh, that's the story. There's not much else, it's pretty unique. I've owned that thing for years. It belonged to my great grandfather. And uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoy it.